Hey guys, welcome back to the second installment of my top 10 players of 2017. Number 5 for me is JNAPS from G2 Esports and this is why. So, I'm gonna have to go back to a bit more of a complete summary of JNAPS and his accomplishments with G2 in the whole year because this is the first G2 player that I've had in this list. And it's very important that we go back through the, the list of results for JNAPS in particular because his year started off really really quite badly and this should put into perspective why his overall win loss for the year is not quite as good as other players that i've been talking about on my uh, on my top 10 uh, but regardless I've, i do have him at fifth place and i'm sure by the end of the video you'll be able to see why uh, even if you don't um, have him in your top five but without any further ado we'll go all the way back to rlcs season three playoffs and uh, jane apps for the entire year has had the same team alongside Cronovia and rizzo in g2 as most of you will know um, but they got a huge upset against them, where they lost 3-4 to four against Lethemir, Sad Jr. and Corrupted G. And everybody's looking at this as a huge, huge disappointment. Uh, I think Sad Jr. even won one of the games for um, Denial, it was at the time, with keyboard and mouse because his controller stopped working. So, uh, Cur you know, Cronovi, Rizzo, JNAPS, they all kind of fell apart. G2 kind of fell apart. That result didn't go as planned. And it didn't really pick up for a long, long time. I'm just going to rattle through some results here and you'll see just how bad things were looking for G2 all the way through the year. So X Games, 0-3 versus GFE. That was their first match. Not a great start, even though GFE were, of course, looking to be on the up. Uh, losing 2-3 to three to uh, Selfless, who were playing with Torment. Um, and then that's the stem out, out of X Games already. Not, not, not too good, if you ask me. Uh, DreamHack Atlanta, losing 1-3 to Envy. Um, and then actually beating Flipside Tactics 3-2 um, who had also fallen in X Games to Selfless so Flipside kind of in a, in a bit of a, um, a trough as well for themselves and G2 were able to get o over the top of them and then losing 2-4 to the Muffin Men who were the eventual winners so you can already see things are starting to pick up a little bit but it's still not great uh, you know it's certainly not consistent not, not what the fans want they want the wins um, but for JNAPS in particular, who most people consider at this point to be an absolute top player in the world, this is not the sort of results that, we, that you want to be getting uh, if you're a JNAPS. Um, and then moving on to RLCS Season 4 playoffs, we have uh, G2 who came in as the second seed, losing 4-1 to Ghost, uh, who were the third seed, and losing 4-1 to NRG in the fourth, fourth place match, third fourth place match. Uh, so complete capitulation in the playoffs and this is right after um, the the second place was secured lands but already secured uh, so maybe we could say playoffs not that important um, because every team from Europe is going to be tough so seeding doesn't matter that much arguably but I would say that um, you know this is still this a very bad sign for G2 because it's another uh, you know run of bad results it shows that they're definitely still very inconsistent they might have finished off group stage quite well they might be the only team that's beaten Cloud9 in group stage but 1-4 against Ghost and 1-4 against NRG not too uh, not too good and moving into gnarly before RLC season for LAN we see uh, JNAPS losing 1-3 to Cloud9 uh, so you know even if they have been the one team who've beaten Cloud9 in group stage well now they've lost to them and they lose to Ghost again um, a team that they uh, were able to beat in the group stage as well of um, RLCS, but now they've lost to them, uh, one to three. So immediately out and gnarly without winning a game. And at this point of the year, um, from playoffs and lands, JNAPS has one win and uh, eight losses, nine losses. Sorry, let me just re uh, get that right. One win and nine losses. So it's a terrible run uh, against rival teams when it matters most. Um, perhaps the one thing, like I said, that we do need to mention is that JNAPS did clutch. Uh, the win in group stage for Ghost, which which got them the land spot. So although, although I don't uh, usually include uh, group stage matchups that heavily in my uh, in my uh, you know total uh, figuring out of rankings and standings at the end of the year, that one is is noteworthy. But RLCS season four land is we're starting to pick up for for G2. They waited a long time, but eventually they got a result which was uh, a bit more respectable, and that was of course fourth place finish. And on the, along the way, they beat Chiefs 3-2. Not a very impressive performance, uh, in my opinion. It was a bit messy from both teams. GFE, uh, they lost 1-3 against those guys, who, of course, went on to win the tournament. Uh, again, not the best performance from G2. But um, on day two, they managed to beat Mocket 3-2. And although Mocket went out of the tournament by only only beating um, the Pale Horse from OCE and losing to, uh, to G2 and Ghost, uh, that, that was still a much better performance from G2. They're looking a lot be a lot cleaner. And then they beat PSG 3-1, and that's a huge result because, of course, PSG um, were second place in Gnarly. 
and had beaten Clyde 9 already at this uh, same tournament. Um, and then G2 did eventually fall to that same team, Clyde 9, 2 to 3. Uh, so overall, positive, I'd say, for uh, G2. Did, did NA proud, did their fans proud. But they went and gone, they went one better, and there's no way, even though JNAPS carried, um, I can say, I can tell you guys right now, even though JNAPS carried G2 all year, and he was looking really good on the stat sheets and, you know, really popped off and nobody had any doubt that he was a top player. There was no way that I could have put him in my top 10 unless they did as well as they did at E-League. And that was, of course, 3-1 over Ghost, 3-1 over Chiefs, losing 0-3 to GFE. So again, it's looking like very same old, same old G2, just, you know, edging out North American rivals and uh, beating Chiefs again, but then getting smashed by GFE. But then they rebounded so strong. And on the final day of E-League, as you all know, uh, JNAPS and, and G2 were able to 4-1 mock it, so another win against mock it, and then get their revenge against GFE, who at this point had smashed them twice uh, in our LCS and E-League earlier in the tournament, beat them 4-3 in a super close grand final, and uh, win the you know biggest prize pool tournament in Rocket League to date. Um, so overall, not the best win-loss ratio for JNAPS. I think he might be the lowest. Yeah, he's beat the lowest. He's 10th place in win-loss, with negative four more losses than wins in series against rival teams throughout the year. He's eight wins, 12 losses overall. So that's like my uh, games to look at throughout the year. JNAPS has actually got the worst win rate because it started his year started so badly. But despite that fact, I've decided to put him in fifth place in the, in the top five, uh, partially because he's number four on my list uh, out of, in prize money, winning $37,379 or something around about that number. Um, and uh, that's you know partially, like I said, due to winning E-League and that tournament being so inflated, having the same prize money total as RLCS but more top heavy, and also uh, having the distribution between eight teams instead of ten. So overall, you know, JNAPS uh, and G2 get fourth at RLCS the season four LAN, um, and then finishing off the year with a huge E-League win was actually able to put JNAPS get him over the top, and also his teammates as well. But you know, JNAPS is the only one. Currently in my top 10, uh, so he's fourth place out of uh, everybody on my list and prize money, but pretty close, you know. Like he's a bit ahead of Torment, Jacob, uh, Garrett, Fairy Peak, um, and Gimmick, who I've already mentioned. About 10,000 actually ahead of Gimmick, but the other guys are a bit closer. Um, uh, but, that, you know, that alone, just winning, uh, you know, 4,000 more, uh, $4,000 more in prize money, if you compare 37,000 to compare to like 34, 33,000 of Torment and... Uh, uh, Jacob or the 30k, 31k of Garrett, there thereabouts. You, you, I wouldn't, uh, you know, say that that's enough of a, of a positive to outdo the sort of like overall bat, like worse team results that he had throughout the year. And the reason that I do put J JNAPS so high, and I had to put him in my top five inside my, in, when I was putting this together, I just thought JNAPS, he has to be top five because even when his uh, team was struggling throughout the year, when G2 are not performing at their best, and uh, you know players are choking and they're not qualifying for lands or they're just losing at lands JNAPS throughout was still by by many considered to be like one of the best if not the best player in North America for large portions of the year so just like I mentioned in the number six video for Garrett I have to uh, you know boost his score a little bit even if his uh, overall win record isn't as impressive as some players below him he's just such a standout player absolute carry for his team and he does that by uh, you know having a very very almost greedy style, like he'll break rotation a lot more than other players at the highest level, but it does work because he's practiced that so much with uh, Cronovia and Rizzo that they kind of know they can anticipate what JNAPS is doing better than other teams, and that's that sort of unpredictability is a lot of what uh, is, is a large part of what enables JNAPS to succeed because he'll break rotation a lot, cut in at angles that nobody expects, and his ball striking ability and his speed are, you know, up there with the best in the world, but comfortably. Like, that's why we always see him on top of the points per game, and we always see him on top of the uh, the score sheets and getting lots of goals. Um, and, you know, even clutching, like I said, I have to go back. Uh, I didn't mention, or I didn't have a graphic for the 3-2 win that the that G2 had over Ghost in the group stage of RLCS Season 4, but JNAPS clutched that series so hard. So many, like, insane solo plays at the end. That, like, ability to just pull a solo play out of nowhere is certainly unrivaled on his team. He, he's he's way more capable of that than uh, Rizzo and Cronovi, but that's not to say that Rizzo and Cronovi are not capable of that. Of course, we did see some pretty nice dribble and demo plays from Kronovi to set up open nets uh, for the likes of JNAPS or you know Rizzo going for that double touch play at RLCS Season 4. I'm not saying that JNAPS is 
the only player making plays in this team. Just saying that the frequency that he is going to make plays that completely decimate opponents will be uh, a lot more, more so, more more frequent uh, than uh, than uh, you know Pernovi and Rizzo, who you know obviously had to show up at Elite if they're going to get the win against GFE. That was a full cool team effort, and I think they uh, showed a lot of improvement. Thanks, I'm sure, a lot to boot camping and just like being able to. Um, work well as a team on fixing their their issues and helping each other to succeed, um, and that that's another element why I you know rank JNAPS maybe a little bit higher. I think the ability to go through that huge wall of losses, like so many losses, one win against Flipside, and then you're looking at nine other nine losses against other teams in playoffs and land to, to start the year up until the RLC season four land. That was the results, and then to bounce back and finish off strong. It really does show a lot of uh, you know fortitude mentally from these guys and, and uh, from JNAPS in particular. Um, so that's why I just have to put him in my top five. There's just no question. I, I just thought to myself, you know, JNAPS, he, he has to be top five. You can make a case for him being lower, but uh, for me, I think he's a top five player when we look at the year as a whole. And um, I, I reiterate, uh, not uh, not in um, in full because of his results and not in full because. He uh, had lots of prize money won because I think the prize money was a bit inflated by the final event. I think more prize money than others, which were just as stacked. Um, and I think that his uh, you know, results earlier in the year, despite being bad, were places where he was still doing pretty well. Like, although the team's not doing well, I think JNAPS is still a standout player by a mile. Um, and it was actually, you know, just as so much Pernovi and Rizzo stepping up towards the latter end of the year that enabled JNAPS to get that LAN victory, it enabled him to get that pretty deep RLCS Season 4 LAN run. Um, and, uh, you know, without that fourth place and first place finish to finish the year, absolutely no way would we have had JNAPS in, in the top 10 because you need to have at least some results, some like a, a grand finals appearance somewhere uh, to be, you know, to look at your year as a success, I think, uh, at, at the very top level. Unless you're just, you know, second place at everything. then, <laughs> Or actually, that would be a grand final. Maybe third, literally third place across the board, I guess, would be would be almost enough to get you on a top 10. Uh, but even in, in the... Even now, with uh, how many players and how many teams are showing up and winning lands, uh, that would that would be tough. Uh, that would be really tough. They're looking at Energy, Cloud9, and GFE in particular, they they all had you know, so many big big results this year that it would be really hard to uh, get into a top ten if you came third at everything. But yeah, hopefully that's given a bit of um, that shed a bit of light on why I have JNAPS in my top five and why I think he uh, deserves to be there. Um, uh, you know, moving forward, very excited to see just how much higher you can go because, like I said, this isn't that, like I said before, and I'm going to keep saying it because I know some people are only going to tune in for one video. This is not my current top 10 players in the world list. This is just my top 10 players of 2017, what they were able to accomplish throughout the year. Um, and yeah, obviously, JNAPS is a bit of an outlier because he, he is such a hard carry for his team. That's why I do have him higher. Um, but he, who knows, maybe I'd have him even higher if this was my current. Uh, top 10 players in the world. I could I could justify putting JNAPS even higher than fifth, I think, if we're looking at just at this right very, you know, at this moment now, top 10. But that's going to be it for JNAPS and number 5. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something and enjoyed that video. But I'll be back tomorrow with my number 4. I'm looking forward to seeing your predictions and who is it going to who is it going to be. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Thank you once again for watching.